30, telling you that he wanted you to stop the annulment proceedings, giving him another chance? No, he didn't say anything like that. He was so different, Karen. You mean the approach was different? No, I mean, really, he was so... so shy. He sat here making small talk, and he seemed so... ill at ease, so uncomfortable with himself. Well, that certainly is different. I mean, heaven knows he's tried everything else. But that's just it. He wasn't trying anything. Apparently. Jenny, let me ask you one question. Does he want you back or doesn't he? He didn't say anything about that at all. Nothing. Oh. Good. Then he's getting smart. He knows that he has to set you up before he can knock you down. But don't you ever let him do that to you, Jenny. Don't you ever, ever let him fool you like that again. That's right, Mr. Riley. The deputy's name is Virgil Birmingham. Like the city in Alabama. Look, I want him to get full credit for this, because he's the one who turned things around. Did the state police uh, have Luke. They're bringing him back to Lambview. They should be there in a couple of hours. I'm, I'm fine. Well, do I sound fine? I'm fine. Becky, will you tell him? Really, he's all right, Mr. Riley. <laughs> there, did you hear that? Oh, sure I can. Yeah, okay, but you'll make the, the, the late city with the bullet. Yeah, I want the man to have it first. Well, I'm going to get off the phone now, so you can shoot that downstairs. Thanks a lot, Mr. Riley. I'll talk to you in the morning. Bye. Is he glad? Yeah, yeah. He's glad. What are you doing? Packing. I want to get out of here. Yeah? What do you think? Write a story. What do you think? Where did you get that typewriter? Out of the trunk of my car. It's my old one. I keep it there just in case. Richard, are you going to write a story about this? That's right. I think that's terrible. I don't think that's very nice of Mr. Riley to make you do that. Mr. Riley? Mr. Riley isn't making me do it. I volunteered. Becky, this is the kind of story that a reporter waits for all his life. Be right in the middle of a big story like this? Be able to write it first hand? Wow. Hey, I made some notes. How do you like this for the lead? Listen. The killer had trailed his quarry to a small cabin high in the mountains. He watched. He waited. Patiently. The young couple he was tracking walked by the lake, watching the fish dart about among the rocks near the shore. Relaxed in the tranquility of the forest, the stillness broken only by forest sounds, the whistle of the wind in the pines, the rhythmic lapping of the waves against the shore, the call of the, uh, that bird you told me, that bird that made the noise. Ah, uh, chiwink. Chiwink, chiwink. The call of the chiwink, echoing its name through the trees, listening to the cooing of the doves, unaware of
Well, um, I, I, I think I'll just have some uh, tonic in my men back. Okay. Uh, no limes here. I know, I'm getting them. Okay. Brian. I know. I remember reading about it. I'm sorry, Pat. It's all right. I can talk about it now. Good for you. He would be about uh, 14 now. About three years older than my son David. By the way, would you be interested in meeting him sometime? Yes, of course. I can't go around avoiding little boys forever, can I? <laughs> no. You can't ignore them very well, can you? Pat, you're an extraordinary person. I never met anyone who's so healthy. Physically or emotionally? Well, both. But I mean emotionally, of course. Oh. Well, you wouldn't have said that if you knew me six months ago. I wish I had. Maybe I could have helped. Oh, but you were still married then, weren't you? So, you had your husband. Yes. And I'm sure he was very supportive. Yes, he was. Although I don't know how I would have survived without him. Still, you're, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Weary. You're weary of your relationships with men, as far as they're concerned. Well, is that so difficult to understand? <laughs> now that I think about it, the first few months that Julie and I split up, I started running every time a woman looked sideways at me. Oh, now sometimes I find that a little hard to believe. Why? Oh, you mean because of how strong I came on with you? I mean, assuming you actually uh, didn't do that. And except for one incident, you've been very sensitive to my feelings. Uh huh. And what was that one incident? The time you took it upon yourself to tell Paul I was using my maiden name for the show. <sighs> that was very tacky of me, wasn't it? Oh, I, I, I just... I knew it right away as soon as it happened. I, I just stood there holding that paper. I couldn't put it away or hide it or anything. I'm so sorry, Pat. It's all right. Paul is very resilient. But are you? I'm getting there. I think you've already arrived. Arrived where? At a point where you're ready to be putting your life back together again. Oh, <laughs> I thought I'd already done that. Professionally, sure. But personally? <laughs> I want to go on record about something, and then I'm going to shut up and go home. When you do get to the point of putting your personal life back together, I'd like very much to be a part of it. said my piece. Now I'm going to get out of your hair. Thanks again for a wonderful evening, Pat. Oh, don't bother coming to the door with me. That way we won't have to worry about the problem of my kissing you goodnight. See you tomorrow. Oh, right.